I'm Koa and I welcome you to join me for part two of my mini-series as I learn and teach about the natural wonders of Costa Rica. In this episode, we'll take a look at some of the spectacular fishes of the Pacific Coast. Costa Rica shares most of its borders with the Pacific Ocean to the west and the Caribbean Sea to the east. Generally, the Pacific Coast has a better established diving culture and offers great diving at sites such as Fat Islands, Gulf of Papagayo, and the famous Cocos Islands which are 480 kilometers southwest off the coast. There are also many other good diving spots in Costa Rica. March to May generally offer good coastline snorkeling and diving. And for the deeper diving, June to September offer good visibility. My companions and I set out to explore the rocky reefs in the Gulf of Papagayo, seeking to find the natural beauties that gracefully mingle beneath the ceaseless surface. For me, an enthusiast of ichthyology, a word which means the biology or study of fishes, I was eager to identify and swim with the aquatic creatures. Approximately 1,100 species of fishes live in Costa Rican waters, 980 of which are marine. Costa Rica has a mere 0.034% of the world's landmass, with a similar portion of water territory, and hosts more than 3.25% of the world's fishes. That's a lot of fishes for a small country. Tourist favorites are whale sharks, white-tipped reef sharks, white-spotted eagle rays, mores, and colorful reef fish. Only some two to seven million years ago did tectonic shifts raise the land of Costa Rica and Panama, cutting off a massive waterway. This separation aided in speciation, separating populations of fishes as well as other organisms, such as the specific white-spotted eagle rays a species that differs genetically from their close relatives inhabiting the waters on the other shores of Costa Rica in the Caribbean and Atlantic. Every creature has a niche in its habitat. These Acapulco majors, a type of damselfish, aggressively guard a small section of territory from these Cortez rainbow wrasses, even against snorkelers venturing too close for comfort. And these female Cortez rainbow wrasses, known as Arco Iris in Spanish, are the polygonous harem of usually one larger male that varies in coloration, seen here with the purple body and yellow saddle. This species and many other wrasses are protogynous hermaphrodites, meaning they begin life as female and then, should an opportunity arise, develop into a male. Another damselfish hanging around this nearshore rock reef is the giant damselfish, or Haketa gigante. The juveniles have gorgeous iridescent spotting before they develop into the more consistent dark blue hue. This species primarily feeds off attached algae and will defend its feeding and breeding territory with vigor. The Panamanian sergeants, or Pintaño Amarillo, are often in large aggregations, feeding on plankton and also benthic invertebrates easily seen by the fluorescent yellow bodies with black bands. They are close relatives to the sergeant majors inhabiting the waters of the Caribbean. These sergeants are stenothermal, meaning they can only tolerate a narrow range of temperature. These ice and guinea fowl puffers wander around, feeding on the tips of branching corals as well as on sponges, algae, and mollusks. This species also has a yellow variation. This guinea fowl puffer belongs to the order Tetrodontiformes, consisting of the other puffer fishes, trigger fishes, porcupine fishes, and file fishes. Their unique combination of fin undulations and oscillations make them easy to distinguish from other fishes, not to mention the roundly bodies. These freckled or long spined porcupine fish, or peserizo by their Spanish name, are often seen around reefs sometimes alone and sometimes in small aggregations. Porcupine fishes have few natural predators because of specialized defense adaptations. They are capable of swallowing water and or air to expand their body three times the normal size. Their spines are modified scales, the most elaborate scale modification of any of the bony fishes. Also, some porcupine fishes are poisonous as their internal organs possess tetrodotoxin a neurotoxin 1,200 times more powerful than cyanide. Mostly porcupine fishes are rather peaceful and curious, and definitely a marvel of evolution. Another tetrodontiform swimming around is the orange-side triggerfish, 
or cochino in Spanish. These fish will blow water on the sand trying to uncover prey and dislodge urchins. Moray eels appear to be aquatic snakes, but alas, they are fishes. This beautiful fish, a mature dragon rat or vieja dragon, was a bit weary of my diving. Butterfly fish are ornamental types, appealing and easily recognizable for divers. This is a barber fish, or black-nosed butterfly fish, or in Spanish, mariposa amarilla. These mullets school in shallow waters, often entering rivers or estuaries. Angelfish are also in these shallow nearshore waters, such as this king angelfish, or Angel Real, easily identified by the white band behind the gill plate extending to the dorsum. The blue barred parrotfish are a bit camera shy, but they'd rather be scraping algae from the rocks and corals. This barred serrano is a solitary fish. Many fishes have symbiotic relationships with other fishes such as this juvenile pilot fish that has decided my companion, Galen, is a worthy host. Pilot fish engage in semi-obligate commensal relationships with sea turtles, sharks, and rays while feeding on the excrement ectoparasites and leftovers of their hosts. Juveniles are usually found around floating debris and jellyfish, so this little fella is quite ambitious to grow up. Razor or chancho surgeon fish, also known as barbero in Spanish, are easily spotted by their yellow tails. They can form massive schools, feeding on algae off the reefs. Reef cornet fish, or pace corneta, blend into the water almost perfectly with their thin bodies and bluish coloration. A school of scissor-tailed damselfish can be mesmerizing to witness. It's amazing to ponder that humans have only explored 5% of the oceans. Aquatic habitats are as foreign as they are fascinating, and we are absolutely dependent on their well-being. I firmly believe that teaching about fishes and marine life is the best way to conserve biodiversity and maintain fish populations. A universal truth of humanity is that we fear and abuse what we know little about. I encourage everyone to take five minutes to learn about an aquatic species that lives near them. Nature is chock full of interdependencies, relationships that sustain life, and humanity is not an exception to that law of nature. It's all about loving the beautiful chaos of nature. These graceful Pacific white-spotted eagle rays depend on healthy habitats. As does this Pacific chuparay. There's more to come from Costa Rica. Some great adventures and some fishes in deeper water further off the coast. Thank you for watching. You can find more information on the species seen here on my website. Also, feel free to contact me with any questions or comments. I encourage you to subscribe to my channel, that's free, and I humbly accept any donations so that I may continue learning and teaching about our world. Thank you. Mmm, rico.